Welcome guys and hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Zakwan. So today in this section, I'll be trying to explain to you on the fundamental knowledge about vital extractions of metals. Did you know that plants have the ability not just to absorb metals from the ground but also they are able to accumulate and tolerate to high levels of metals in its aerial tissues? Amazing, isn't it? My plant possesses a remarkable ability to take up metals such as copper, zinc and iron from their environment. These metals are actually essential for their growth. For example, if you look at copper, it is actually an important component of an electron transfer reaction mediated by many proteins such as superoxide dismutase, cytochrome oxidase as well as plastocyanin. While zinc on the other hand required, is required as a cofactor for many enzymatic reactions in plant. Interestingly, non-essential metal such as cadmium can also be taken up and accumulated in plant tissues prior to the uptake. While some metals are readily soluble for uptake, metals that are tightly bound to the soil particles can be solubilized by secretion of chelators such as citrate which is released from plant roots or by acidification of the rhizosphere. Subsequent metal uptake and accumulation may involve several steps. Metals can either follow a same plastic or an apple plastic route. So in the same plastic route, the metal ion will cross the plasma membrane of the root cells through transporters such as channel proteins and will diffuse between the cells through the plasmodesmata bridges. While in the apoplastic route, the metal ions will travel through the spaces between cells towards the xylem. Plants can be categorized into three groups on the basis of their metal uptake strategy. The first group is called the metal excluders, whereby these plants are able to accumulate high amounts of metals in the roots, but it will avoid transporting the metals to the aerial tissues. The second group is called the metal indicator plants. The special thing about this plant is that they are able to accumulate metals in the above ground tissues at the level similar to the surrounding soil. Whereas for the third group, which is called the metal hyperaccumulators, are actually plants that are able to accumulate high levels of metals in the aerial tissues compared to the tissues from the roots. Phyto extraction can be defined as a technology whereby plants are used to take up, transport and accumulate metals from the soil into the above ground tissues. In order to achieve an efficient phyto extraction rate, the plants are required to have the following attributes such as fast growth rate, high metal transport rate from the roots to the shoots, high biomass composition, deep roots as well as having high tolerance of the target metal. The phyto extraction process involves the uptake of metals through the absorption into the root followed by xylem transportation into the aerial tissues. Metals can then be sequestered as well as stored in the cell wall into the vacuole or they can also be reduced by cytoplasmic chelation. Metal hyperaccumulators are plants that can grow in soils containing relatively high concentration of metal, taking up and highly concentrating that metal in their tissues. Metal hyperaccumulators are the plant species of choice for phyto extraction purposes as they are capable of accumulating exponentially higher concentrations of metals relative to the metal concentration in the surrounding soil. At least there are around 700 hyperaccumulated plant species that have been described so far, belonging to a wide range of families and many of these have been extensively studied for phyto extraction purposes. Known examples are Arabidopsis hilary and Claspicerulescens, which are able to accumulate high levels of arsenic, lead, zinc, as well as non essential metals such as cadmium. In order to classify plants as hyperaccumulators, other than being able to accumulate higher than the underground tissues, the metal accumulation concentration in the above ground tissues should also be above certain level. For example, uh, in order for a plant to be classified as arsenic, nickel or lead hyperaccumulators, it has to be able to accumulate at least 1000 microgram per gram of metals in its above ground tissues. 
An example of a nickel hyperaccumulator plants is Philanthus rufus cherry, a tropical plant locally grown on automorphic serpentine soil in Sabah, Malaysia, which recently discovered by Dr. Anthony van der Ann and his team uh, back in 2015. This plant is able to accumulate as high as 23,000 micrograms per gram in its above ground tissues, especially in the old leaves, and is found to be highly selective over other metals such as cobalt, chromium, and manganese. Phytomining is an approach whereby specific metals can be extracted and reconcentrated from waste sources such as mine waste, which contain concentrations of precious metals such as gold and palladium that are currently uneconomic to be re-extracted back using the conventional method. The idea of phytomining was first coined by Rufus Cheney as a means of using plants to remove metals from sub-economic ore bodies or contaminated mine sites with the additional aim of recovery of economic amount of metals. Phytomining has been investigated to recover many metals with high commercial value such as gold, nickel, silver as well as palladium. Phyto extraction is a great tool to be used as a green alternative to recover metals from contaminated areas such as mine waste. Other than being able to accumulate precious metals such as palladium, uh, previous work has shown that the plant-based palladium has demonstrated a comparable catalytic uh, activity with commercially available palladium catalysts. Plant was also found to be able to produce uh, catalytically active palladium nanoparticles without the requirements for toxic chemicals or energy-intensive processes. More work is needed uh, to understand the molecular mechanisms behind the formation of nanoparticles in plants. At the same time, phytoextraction can also be seen as an opportunity to clean up environmental pollution as large areas of land used to dump mine waste may not just contain a precious metal reserve but also phytotoxic levels of metals, hydrocarbon, as well as other byproducts from the mining industry. The use of phytoextraction to revegetate and remediate this contaminated land could be a win-win situation between the environment and the industry. Well, thank you for watching. I do hope that you can get some general ideas on what phytoextraction is all about. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more information about the world of phytotechnology. Feel free to drop your comments below. Save the environment, save the world. That's all from me, Zakwan, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.